السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت اللہ سعید there seems to be a lot of civil unrest in France could you please shed some light on this سعیدی yeah in France on these these people the french fry people <laughs> they make french fries <clears throat> there is a unrest everywhere <clears throat> and they push and they push until something pushes back that their system is based on people being sheep and that they will be taken and slaughtered the way they want. But Allah has a different plan and this is their concern with Islam. Islam is not something that you can manipulate because Allah is in the heart of that servant. So the system in which thinking they can take people like sheep and do what they want with them works for a period of time. After that time Allah ignite the heart of His servants and they're not going anywhere like sheep. And that's the effect of what's happening on this earth and it will be everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere they impose this insanity that they believe Allah will impose His belief upon creation inshaAllah. <coughs> and Islam is the only one that will uphold that way on this earth. Islam is the only religion on this earth because it's the only religion of Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How to <coughs> safeguard these immense blessings received from tariqah when there is so much backbiting surrounding us? This is the immense danger. That's where the, the whole understanding of, of our life, again like we said the elevator, the chair, this, this one is an umbrella. Imagine you have a, a umbrella like steel, your life is to stay under that umbrella. So the husband, his umbrella is biggest because he's the imam, his character has to be good. If his umbrella is strong enough it will be like an umbrella under his wife and her protection will be an umbrella under the child. Shaitan is now angered by that umbrella. So his only job is to what? Get you to come out of that protection. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come on out. How would you get out? How can you come out of Allah's protection is by bad character, bad actions. So anyone who goes out and make a fitna and backbite and, and start you know gossiping and anger then they start to move outside of that umbrella of protection and that's what the shaitan wants, right? As soon as they come out of the protection of the umbrella shaitan then activates his devils, go after them. Because now they can see that person. Under the protection of the umbrella Allah has veiled shaitans from seeing them and coming after these people. So this is a very dangerous time that's why don't engage in fitna. If somebody calls you, talks to you, says something, as soon as you listen you're as guilty as the one who's speaking it. Just cut yourself from any type of fitna. You think, oh I'm going to entertain myself and listen to it. No, no, you're as guilty as the one who's speaking it. So it means that fitna and that's the purpose of why shaitan is sending that. Shaitan is sending that person to send that energy and our life is to cut ourselves off from all of these types of realities 
and keep the love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad There's so much to do, so much zikr to do, salawats to do, good things to do. Stay away from these types of things inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can we be tested in dreams? Sure, why can't you? Things that are too heavy for you to be tested on earth, on the physical life, they can bring it in a dream. Means that a physical battle maybe would be heavy for a person physically but Allah can send it in a dream in which they go through a battle, they go through the sequence of the battle, they go through all the difficulties of death and injury and, and, and trauma that the, you would witness in a battle, not your own death, other death. So Allah can send us into these dimensions of dream in which to be tested and, and to observe or to, to be tested in what Allah wants the person to be tested with. Tariqah has many common things, when you're going to be tested in spiritual fighting the shaykh will come and take you and it may seem like a dream state in which you enter into a different realm and, and there's a different spiritual fighting, spiritual reality that can't be done on the physical necessarily, so it would happen within the spiritual. But in Allah's way anything can happen so we can't limit anything by saying no. Allah is great, Allah can do whatever ever Allah wants to do. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah I apologize if this is off topic off but… Off topic, okay. What may be the reality behind people that sleepwalk? No idea, they sleepwalk. <laughs> maybe they're possessed, maybe they're too sleepy, maybe they didn't get enough sleep. How could you limit what that answer would be, right? Because anytime you deal with sleep and dreams it's a thousand variables. That's why we don't believe in the dream state, we don't interested at all in dream state. Was it because you ate spicy foods? Was it because you were angry? Was it because you were over occupied with a thought? So you can influence in many ways the dream state. Now imagine a person who took something for sleep and is too sleepy but has to get up and they don't understand and they're moving around. Or some people whom sleep very lightly and, and energy occupies them and they start moving around the house. So it can be many different variables. But inshaAllah make sure that you have a taweez, you keep yourself in wudu, that you sleep with wudu, that you read what needs to be read before you sleep and that to try to avoid that state. Make sure that you have a taweez and protection. If energies are coming and making the person to move and go to the kitchen and eat things that are not a part of their normal diet. But more and more when we said that the gray will vanish, more and more is that they will show themselves. We gave this talk before, before they veiled themselves not to be seen, now they're coming out to be seen. That's why they're showing their styles in the store that wear these clothes, wear these images. They're not hiding and they're coming out and saying who they are, what they believe and, and they're going to expose themselves. As they expose themselves people will lose their minds because they're not equipped to, to think that this dimension really existed, right? They made, they, made, they made friends with devils they can't see. So I imagine these people whom have markings on their bodies when they begin to see these markings will start to move all over them. Like horrific movement of these demons, you think they're ready to see that? They thought this was just some simple thing they're doing to themselves. No, no there's not anything simple with that. So they're not equipped now to understand the music they listen to brings these shaitans into their home. If they have to open their eyes and see the shaitans are sitting in their home because they're preparing themselves now to battle. We said the day would come when they show themselves they're now prepared to battle if they show themselves because that's their weakest state. As soon as they show themselves they can be killed. So they begin to show themselves and this is the purpose of putting their agenda and destroying and contaminating the hearts of people. 
Why would you contaminate the hearts of the most powerful people? Who are the most powerful people? Who's mazloom? Right? Who has more power? Old man? No, he's filled with sins. Mazloom, they're closest to Allah, their fight is against Allah. They want to anger Allah, so they hurt His youngest creations because they're innocent. So their battle is against Allah that's why they're doing that. And if they can destroy these children young age, contaminate their heart, their energy, their belief system, well that's not going to be a spiritual soldier. So they have less to worry about because they're about to expose themselves. If they're going to expose themselves it's not going to be to Rijalullah because they're scared to death of them. But if they can contaminate and destroy enough people then they feel more comfortable in their exposure. So they, ha they have an agenda and their fight is against heavens and Allah And they plan and Allah's plan is already all-encompassing, has already incorporated this plan inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Does giving more and more money to the tariqah dress us with immense realities and blessings? No, that's, that's not nice. Mm. No. You, you live a life of service, you live a life of, of love and commitment and it's not the one for the other otherwise it's like, can I buy my station right away? It's not that. There was an Algerian shaykh that when in the time of fight and battle against the French army he got all his students and said, he's the lion of the desert, they call Qadir, Umar Qadir, told his students, come, say, what Sayyidi? He said, take a rope, tie it to my feet and then tie all your feet and we're going to stand on this mound to fight these tanks that are coming. He said, what? He said, yeah. You tie your foot to my foot so you don't run anywhere. And he was known for this system because he stand right in the front line with his students and they, they, they were the most feared group out in that desert. And they were victorious, means the system is tie your foot to the shaykh otherwise you're running. And the, if you don't sign up for something, you're not committed to something, you don't go out and be of service to something, first something happens you're the first one to run. No problem run, people can run all they want. But when you have a hikmah and wisdom like we described a thousand times before, you tied yourself to the shaykh and oh I spent so much, I committed so much, why well, I'm going to go now to another shaykh and sit down in his room and begin to know him and to do this whole thing again? I don't want to do that. I'm committed to this shaykh for the, until I go to the grave and at that time I'll resolve everything that needs to be resolved. It means you tied your foot and that was the hikmah. Now is it giving large sums of money or time or effort or, or commitment? Anything, anything that somebody does. They have a computer skill, they give it. They have time, they go out and give food. That commitment is for your heart that, ah, oh, I've, I've committed to this tariqah, to the shaykh and to this way. And that's what's important because that then is sincerity and sincerity opens the heart. That's what's important. So anything we do that brings sincerity in our khuluq and our character, then Allah inshaAllah opens the heart and grants the reward to servants. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do single ladies with kids keep protection? Hmm? You're talking about protection and the umbrella. Umbrella. Be vigilant. The most important thing with doesn't matter single, family, just be vigilant that uh, I don't know if it's cultural but to not trust, not be trusting. That to understand that we live in a society now like wolves, werewolves. That to be vigilant over the children, vigilant over our, our loved ones, anyone whom we love you have to be vigilant over them. That what's happening, who's coming around, look around. The more vigilant you are the more those devils stay away. They take advantage over heedless people. 
who they walk around looking heedless, their, their family looks like they're heedless and uh, they're attracted to that because they say these people are heedless. So the, the demeanor in which we carry ourselves is very important. Only now you'll begin to understand because of social media. So they brought a criminal and say, what kind of people did you target? He said, weak looking people. Because we don't want a confrontation. If I was going to steal something, do something, hit someone, it looked like a weak person. They walked weak, they looked like they didn't have confidence and that's the kind of person we target. And then you come to the hikmah and immense wisdom of the holy sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad that to be upright, to be strong, carry your posture correctly, keep your beard, keep your hair very short so that you look fierce. When you wear the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad shaitans are scared of it. That's why they give you a hard time on the street. If you want to be popular that's something different but when you carry the holy sunnah it has what we call haybah. The angels are all around the individuals who carry the sunnah and they have good hearts. As a result of that energy it has an immense haybah and that now we find now this is an immense hikmah in days of difficulty. So anyone who can keep the sunnah, keep the hijab, keep what Allah has ordained it's a veil of protection. Not thinking, oh they're going to target me, no this is your way of veiling yourself from the system. This matrix that people live in as soon as they are part of the matrix all the devils can see them. When you veil with heavenly realities you are outside of their matrix, right? So the one whom is on it's called a hijab, means it's called a protection. It's not clothing, it, Allah gave these words for one day people would understand like we gave the reality of the Hafiz of Qur'an, right? Why would you call somebody who memorized Holy Qur'an Hafiz, guardian? Because it wasn't memorizing, it was that these are the guardians of the kitab, blockchain. Nobody can cheat and steal us and say, we changed the Qur'an because 900 other million Hafiz are going to come and say, no way. So each word Allah gave to us is a reality, so the hijab is actually protection. So as soon as like, and, they, and they're coming out now with the, they have these f uh, fabric, you put it on yourself and you become transparent. I've seen these transparent things out of Japan where the, the fabric takes an image from, and there's transparency fabric, mm. they have a technology on it. So when they put yourself on nobody can see you. But Allah gave us that which is called the hijab. As soon as you put that on, these devils can't see you, they don't interact with you. And you keep the way of modesty. Now if you modify that and act differently that's your program you changed. But everything Allah gave to us was a protection for energy and these days of difficulty. So for men the sunnah has a, a very majestic energy, you carry your, your ring has a hayba on your hands, you look differently when these types of predators are looking. In different areas you walk with a staff and a sunnah, strong and upright, again it has a hayba and an energy. That the devils with that person who would be inspiring them to do something get fearful and they know there's something different about these people, these are like Muhammadans and they don't deal with that. So everything that Allah gave to us if we adhere to it with sincerity and good character should be immense protections for the days of difficulty. But remember we said 20 years ago when we started this in, in our teaching that people would think themselves clever and would run out of the protection. You know the hardest part in the last days for a shaykh is to get people to stay protected stay in this room. If I tell you like something is happening and there's demons outside, just keeping people to stay in the room will be a difficulty because each person will think, no I, I can do it myself, no, no you guys are, you're, you're gonna all be finished, I know where to go and to be safe. No, it's how to keep yourself to surrender, submit, be patient, be calm and listen to the advice that's coming, inshaAllah. <laughs> Uh, 
السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و اللہ If one's heart is hardened, how does it become soft? Rather, how to get a soft heart filled with ishq and taqwa and love and sincerity and obedience? Well, you're going to be a steak and Allah is going to grind you. You can go that route or you start to have the love for Prophet ﷺ, do your salawat, do your durood, make your meditation so that that energy comes and begin to melt the heart. Finding love and being loving shouldn't ever sound like it's a difficult task. So you know this world will grind people. Every hard person will be grounded down like dust. That's what's coming upon this earth. So we don't need that. We just need to make our salawats, have the love for Prophet ﷺ, have compassion within our hearts, be a soft person, be you know soft spoken. and try our best to have good character so that Allah's rahmah and mercy to be upon us inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam <coughs> If sadness is a means in which the light enters due to certain difficulties, should we pray for the difficulties to go away or just breathe and move through it? Forgive me Sayyidi. Yeah, sadness as a means of difficulties to come to us. I don't know if it's sadness as a means, I know that people in subcontinent are kind of obsessed with sadness and, and difficulty, thinking that, that everything is sad, everything is horrific, everything is difficult but I think sabr jameel is a different way to look at everything. That my life is based on being patient, patient gives us jameel, beauty. So when Allah wants to dress His servant with beautific tajalli. He puts them in a situation to see if they have sabr. So it's not necessarily sadness that will break us down but just to have patience. Sadness is when we remember Imam Hussain So anytime you… if you're following us you'll know more than anyone that your life should be in memory of Imam and Hussain that look at how… He suffered, how he went through difficulty, how he brought his family into his test. He didn't leave them behind, he stepped into his faith, into his fate and whatever was destined because it becomes a role model for all the people who complain to be quiet. When you see that light and that love and that relationship to Prophet how they slaughtered in the desert. by Muslims, not non-Muslim, by Muslims slaughtered in a desert, then it makes everything in our life very petty. Like, really? Why, why to be so this and so upset and, and make everything so dramatic? Look how the, the, the poor family suffered. The family of Prophet most beloved of Allah So it's important in our life to have these heroic figures to humble us, to not so whiny and complainy and everything so, so foo-foo-y. When everything is… make everything upside down, everything's so dramatic, they say, here everybody get drunk on a grape. One little problem and the whole world is a catastrophe. No, this is… they really suffered. So when you examine the life of people whom have truly suffered in the way of Allah It keeps us to be quiet that, Ya Rabbi, oh my problem's nothing, I'm good, thank you. I, I know how other servants can be tested in difficulty, I'm very good Ya Rabbi and make your salawats, give me patience through anything and I know it's nothing compared to what you can test me in. And then you build a different relationship in, in events that come into our life. An event comes, it's on how you perceive it. Do you feel it's a growing if thing or you think it is a problem? If it's a problem you're trying to get rid of it. If you think of it as a, this is an opportunity for me to grow. That's why imtihan comes, test comes. If you look at a test as a problem, you're trying to get rid of it like a jacket that you just don't like and you want to dump it somewhere. But if it's, no, Allah loves me, now He's going to give me a very high darajat. Oh, what am I going to do then to pass this darajat? I'm going to be patient, I'm going to make salawats, I'm going to pretend like it's not really happening. And you, you pass with all this good character, right? 
So it's, it's what you see as an opportunity or as a problem. So some people when they ask all these questions a lot of times it's like everything is a problem. You know Allah's just giving them sadness, it's just Allah's trying to defeat them. Why? Allah loves His servant. But look at the reverse, it says, you want all these stations that these awliya talk about? How did you think you were going to get there? Just by everything being beautific and you know roses, uh, rose petals thrown on your head? No, but He's going to send tests, this is Allah's gift to us. Oh Allah sent a test, let me be patient, do my salawats and beautifically sort of move through it and alhamdulillah Allah gave, now I gave you a new darajat. Otherwise how are we going to achieve these darajats? So everything is an opportunity, not Allah angry with us, punishing us and beating us, that's the other group. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, uh, some <coughs> shaykhs are saying to not let our children to go to school, rather private or home schools, mm. as certain agendas are taking place at these public schools. Okay. If you can homeschool, then homeschool. If you have the ability to teach your children, then teach your children. If you have the ability to collectively come together, five, ten, fifteen families, and make a charter school in which you can apply through the government, get government funding. I think the guys in Northern California, they actually made a charter school, they had like 30 families. Mm. They came together and they got a school and they got money, f they got the government money that was going to go to the public school, they'll give it to a charter school. Wow. And in their charter they, they say it's based on religion. So they don't have to do those types of ridiculous mm. uh, stuff. So it would depend on people's cleverness. If it's just themselves alone somewhere then teach your children by yourself and do homeschooling inshaAllah. But it's going to get worse and worse and worse and then you know until these people, <coughs> until Allah brings punishment. Good. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa hamdalillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shafati ya Rasulul Kareem, make sure everybody has taweezes, they, their children are wearing taweezes. We, we, we talk to many people, they say, yeah my taweez is in the car, my taweez is in the purse, my taweez is in my wallet, my taweez is here, there from different people. And the taweez has to be on you. Then you have taweezes on your car, you have taweezes on your home. Because these shaitans are sort of hunting for people everywhere. So these are immense blessings that Allah has given to the turuqs as an added means of protection. So alhamdulillah these are all the equipment that the believer needs. They have the sunnah, they carry the taweezes, they do everything according to how Allah wants them to do and the rest is in Allah's hands to protect the servant inshaAllah. Bi niyati khatmi khawjikan. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.